Thank you, everyone. And today I will talk about uh, effective online learning uh, during the school closure. I'm Jia Yuan Fang, founder and CEO of Efficient Academy. And, uh, and this is the outline of my uh, talk today. Uh, first, I'll give a very brief self-introduction and uh, introduce why I was Efficient Academy founded. And uh, also then I will uh, talk about uh, the shortcomings of conventional education and some overview on the existing after school uh, education programs. And then I'll talk about the challenges of learning during the school closure. Okay. And introduce Efficient Academy's content, flow, and methodology. And introduce our students' progress. And, and talk about the US middle and high school mass pathways. And also our uh, Efficient Academy program structure. And also what your child can achieve during this school closure. Okay, here is a brief introduction of myself. I received my bachelor's degree from Tsinghua University in Beijing, China, and a PhD from UC Berkeley. After that, I've been university professors for 12 years in electrical engineering. And uh, during my professorship, and uh, I founded a company and convert the research breakthrough to commercial products. And uh, that's for in the in the space of uh, electronic design automation. It's a uh, automation software design and for high speed uh, print circuit boards and chip carriers and uh, and uh, IC chip. Stability, uh, which is stand for signal integrity. And uh, so that's the address the high speed design, signal integrity and power integrity issues. And the company was acquired by Cadence in 2012, and I will be I have been a VP of R&D at Cadence for two years, and I founded uh, this company, Efficient Academy, in 2014. Okay, and here are a, a number of awards I received, and from uh, NSF, from IEEE, and from uh, uh, and also Silicon Valley Entrepreneur of the Year Award, and uh, uh, from Tsinghua Entrepreneurship and Executive Club. Okay, and how do I get into the uh, the after school education? Actually, before 2014, I myself is not in that business. And the reason is, and uh, I have uh, three kids, and I've been closely involved in my three kids for over uh, 20 years. And this is a picture when they are young, and uh, the little ones, and uh, the lower picture is uh, was taken uh, uh, last year when my second one uh, in the middle uh, graduated from Yale, and uh, so my first one went to Berkeley and uh, right now in the doctor of pharmacy program, and my third one uh, is uh, 12th grade and he's about to attend the University of Chicago uh, next fall. So uh, I have been. Uh, Close involved in their education, the school and after schools, and exper experienced many after school learning centers and online programs, and realized, and to my surprise, actually, realized that schools and after school programs are very slow to adopt modern technology to help students learning. Okay, so I founded the company about uh, close to six years ago. And and with the purpose to enhance learning effectiveness uh, with uh, modern technology. Okay, so what are the shortcomings of a conventional education, right? So first of all, the whole class move at the same pace, right? And uh, the way they teach is the same as the, the, the way they teach 20, 30 years ago, except now they put them to online, right? And it's hard to accommodate individual needs. And the schools are not able to uh, ensure every student learns well. So, and the students move move on to the next grade without fully master uh, the material. And school wish everybody learn well, but they cannot. So that's why we have given every student uh, either A or B or C as they move up. And students are left with individual knowledge gaps and making learning in higher grades and increasingly difficult. 
So, so that's the conventional classroom, uh, uh, the lecture-based education. And there are many after-school programs, and as I said, uh, through the last 15, 20 years, I've experienced many of them, and through <laughs> working with my kids. And one, one type is the physical learning centers, and the biggest one is the, the Kuma, and uh, there's 1,500 uh, Kuma centers in U.S., okay? and also other learning centers. And virtually all these learning centers, there's no technology is used. So their efficiency is the same as uh, maybe 30 years ago. Okay. So one of my kids, my youngest one, and uh, went to Kuma for more than uh, maybe close to four years. And I've been grading uh, uh, his uh, worksheets from Kuma for, I think, three to four years. And uh, so... Uh, I strongly feel that uh, all this thing and uh, uh, the learning efficiency can be greatly improved, and uh, um, and without the technology, that's the way they uh, they have been doing. But uh, with the modern t uh, available technology and uh, the learning efficiency and the quality can be greatly improved. Uh, we do have the online programs. I put it into two categories and. Uh, one is Khan Academy, IXL, and uh, all the other programs. So these programs, there's a lot of online programs also right now. And some of them are no cost, some of them with little cost. And uh, however, the, the major problem is uh, there's uh, no advising or supervision function, okay? Or very little supervision function. Not many of programs, there's no advising. But Khan Academy, you go there, and uh, if you don't, uh, you're stuck on somewhere. and uh, uh, and also, if you uh, the student don't do anything, and nobody will make sure they do. And uh, so, other type, and I say online too, is a type of the supervisions. So, all my three kids have tried John Hopkins CTY and ETGY. It's not discontinued, but the CTY is still on, and uh, it's computerized. It's not. Uh, it's it's online, uh, not necessarily computerized. So. Uh, um, However, they are, they have been there for a long time, and uh, it's, it's a good program. However, they still not fully use the, the technologies, and uh, it's not result-centric. And uh, people uh, watch the videos, do the exercise, then prepare for the uh, exams. After the exam, exam graded. After the, the graded exam, they get people's A or B or C, right? It's not the, the optimize or, or find the, find the weakness and make sure everybody get excellent result. So it's just make sure it goes through the, the process and everybody get a result, but not necessarily get excellent result. Okay. And uh, let's go very briefly about the introduce those uh, major programs. I just selectively uh, select a few. So Kuma was the uh, founded in uh, maybe 70 years ago from Japan. So began to the Kuma began to teach his eldest son. And in mathematics, okay, and uh, so very interesting. So they they start their business by their own uh, uh, kids or or their relatives, and then gradually uh, develop uh, the the system. So he started. Uh, I don't think he started with uh, the purpose of building the uh, a business, but just just want to help his uh, his his son. Okay, and later on and. Uh, it becomes uh, the open learning center uh, a few years ago, and also it extend to uh, overseas. And the first U.S. Center Court, uh, learning center is in, was established in 1974, and they have English in 1991. Okay, now Kuma is the largest after school program in the world. Okay, so how it works? Uh, again, I my one of my kids has been there for almost four years. And the placement test is determined is to determine the student's starting point. And it's an individualized program of worksheets by the instructor. And you have a, a give you each week, and you have a daily assignment that takes about 30 minutes uh, per subject. And students move on to the next level when they have achieved mastery of the previous level, and mastering which means you correct all the mistakes, and uh, and they have an incremental lessons, and to teach each uh, skill. The worksheet provides samples of how to solve each problem. It's not like a teacher teach you each problem. It's, uh, the worksheet teach you how to solve this problem. 
and enabling students to uh, self-learn new concepts on their own. Okay, so that uh, when I uh, many years ago when I look at all the after-school programs, I, I, I like it very much. And uh, the reason is it's individualized and self-paced. Okay, uh, it's emphasize the, pra uh, the practicing and mastering fundamental skills. And the, the, the conventional schools, they don't, especially in the US, they do not uh, uh, the practice and mastering fundamental skills enough. Okay. And they emphasize self-learning capabilities. Okay. Students can get ahead of the schools on their own. Right? They finish one level, they go to the next level. And the student progress is monitored and uh, communicated uh, to the parents. So the learning center instructors or owners, they, they keep the parents uh, informed. Okay. So what's the uh, what's a, uh, so what's the problem? What's a disadvantage? The disadvantage is students do not know their mistakes until their worksheets are graded, right? So I would have been the one who graded my son's worksheet for more than three years. So after I get back from my work at the late night, I I, I grade my kids uh, worksheet. And learning centers prepare each uh, week's uh, assignment. And uh, you go there and uh, get a new assignment and uh, turning your previous week's assignment. So they prepare the next week assignment before knowing your student result from the previous week. So there's a certain delay, okay, into the new assignment because when they prepare, they do not know, they do not get your, your previous weeks. And the content is not aligned with US uh, school standards. And the most uh, thing which bothered me is uh, no te modern technology is used to enhance learning efficiency and quality. And uh, watch the, the procedure they have to go through and by, by manually and to give assignments and determine which worksheet to give it to you and whether you did uh, well or not. And uh, it's just uh, uh, without, again, without the modern technologies and about the 30 years ago or in 1950s, 1970s, 80s, that's fine. But now you can do much better. And uh, another one is uh, the Khan Academy. So my kids don't quite like uh, Kuma, so he said that he wanted to try Khan, uh, Khan Academy. I look at the Khan Academy, and uh, and uh, actually I, at that time I like it. I think we, okay, you try Khan Academy. So let's see Khan Academy. Khan Academy began with the tutoring of his cousin in mathematics. Okay. So that's how he started, and he put the, the materials in, uh, on YouTube, okay. And later he founded the company and quit his job, and uh, and then, uh, yeah, and uh, later is uh, he's, uh, he founded the company as a non-profit organization and supported very heavily by uh, Bill Gates and other uh, uh other parties, okay. Uh, right now, I think the Khan Academy is probably the largest online learning program in the world, with hundreds of courses, maybe thousands of courses uh, in in dozens of uh, languages. Okay. Uh, what is the advantage? Okay, it's free. First, it's web based. You can access anywhere, any any time, and there are numerous courses available. Okay, and uh, and also in <coughs> in different languages. And it's individualized. You don't have to follow uh, other people's. It's not like in the in, 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 in the school you have to follow with other a few dozens. And they have a short demos and uh, of skills enabling self learn. And uh, the many demos in mathematics are done by the the founder uh, himself. And uh, it's 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 very good. Uh, uh, the demos and videos. And it's instant feedback to student work. Not like a Kuma, you have to have people to grade them, and uh, it's instant feedback to the student work. Okay, and also the pro the flow makes sure there's more practice required for skills of more mistakes. So if you more uh, mistakes, there will be more practice. Okay, and what's the disadvantage? Okay, the disadvantage is no individual planning, supervision, and monitoring. So nobody makes sure the student does the work. Okay, <coughs> and also. No advising and tutoring when students encounter problem, uh, difficulties. So it's very hard for the students to stick to the program. So if you know what uh, the subject you want to watch, and it's, it's a great program to go there to, to, uh, to find the, the subject and learn from it. However, if the long term you stick to that, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of challenge. 
Uh, another one I want to uh, pick is the IXL. IXL used in the many schools. Okay, they started pretty early, uh, more than 20 years ago, and uh, they released their math program actually uh, after almost uh, nine years. Uh, IXL math. It's a K-12 math practice program, and also six years later in 2013 they launched the English language arts program. Okay. Now it's probably arguably is the used uh, the most uh, in U.S. schools. Okay, and mostly in U.S. schools, they also can provide uh, your family uh, use uh, individually. And uh, so, what's the advantage? It's a low cost. Okay, if you buy a product, uh, let's say one subject, it will cost less than one hundred dollars a year. Okay, and if you the school. Uh, subscribe that you probably can get a school free of charge uh, it's web-based very convenient and the teacher do not need to grade the homework before the teacher it's used mostly by schools school teachers and they can assign the work uh, to their students so they don't need to grade it and easy to track students progress okay and there are a large number of practice to choose from okay so uh, each uh, grade they have uh, so many uh, uh, exercises or skills there, and the teacher just can select uh, what they uh, they want to assign. Okay, and it's a computer based, so it's instant feedback. And for assigned skills, and uh, we have a procedure to let you to practice until you master those skills. Okay, so what is the disadvantages? So it is suitable for teachers to to use to supplement the teaching. So that's I think why why many schools use them. Okay, they just, uh, the school teachers still do their teaching in the classroom in the conventional way. However, in the exercise, they can assign the, the exercise to the students using IXL, but not quite suitable for self learning. Okay. And uh, so you have uh, so many skills, which one to do, right? So the teacher assigns the skill to, to you, and you do not uh, do all the skills. So because there's a large number of practice available. Just like at the, at the end of each chapter of the textbook, and there's a lot, lot of exercises. They don't do all of them, right? However, and uh, for different teachers, they may assign different problems, so the system provides a lot of them. And so there's no, uh, if you do individually, there's no individual planning, supervision, or monitoring, unless used by school. The school teacher monitors that. And no advising a tutor when students encounter difficulties, uh, unless you are. Uh, Part of the school system and school teachers uh, do it. Okay. So uh, next, I talk about the, the the challenges of learning during the school closure, especially in, in this period. So uh, the school also uh, the many uh, public and private schools when the, the, the school closure, they all bring their program online. Okay. And some use uh, uh, Zoom, some use other things, and some uh, put the their lectures on on, on on the video and you watch the video and some you have a, a, a live uh, session of zoom okay so the online classes rushed out by schools are often uh, not effective okay and uh, so some do better than the others okay and uh, there are fewer or canceled classes uh, lectures compared to the regular class and there will be less supervision okay and some just offer in the, each day you have a one or two hours and there's no session the rest of the day. Okay, and less individual interaction. It's not like in the classroom you have interactions. And less in-class quiz or testing. And this, uh, the small quiz or testing become difficult to, uh, to manage. Okay. So, uh, for some of the kids, they have a, uh, they consider it's a great time. So some kids regard the school coach as a vacation, and they play games at night and sleep during the day. Okay, and uh, so and the concern of parents, and uh, it's not like it's just for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. It's most likely it, it uh, uh, the kids won't back to school until the fall. So which means you have another four or five months at least. And uh, before I go to school, and uh, I think in California, most of school uh, will not open for the rest of the semester, which is early June. So at least in the next two months, and the school will start next uh, 
end of, end of August or beginning of September. So the question is, uh, can my child keep up with the academic standards of the school curriculum, right? So you have a, a, a good time now and without the play, play games all the time or not doing things, then what happened if you go, go back? So will my child be behind when he or she return to school in the fall? Uh, so that's, uh, as I said, the, this period is pretty long. It's uh, four to five, or even even longer months. And uh, so I think that a lot of parents are, are concerned. And uh, so uh, we need to find the program and find the program online. Okay. And uh, so so the options, one is uh, uh, the one who uh, uh, attending the previous uh, physical learning centers or online programs. So physical learning centers and uh, so uh, the, all the centers are closed. In-person classes are canceled, right? So many of them will move to online. And some of them can, some of them cannot, right? So the worksheets and workbook, and uh, you cannot just uh, put it online. And you still probably need to get it from the, from the learning center and, uh, and give it back. And uh, so somebody has to uh, record them and give you the next week's worksheet for others, okay? And in-person placement tests uh, become hard to carry out. And before you go there and do the placement test on the paper, and now and uh, need to do it in other ways. And how to distribute, submit, and grade worksheets and other paper-based assignments. So uh, different uh, learning centers, I think they they change in uh, different ways, but uh, they are trying to accommodate, but cannot. Uh, uh, completely uh, fulfill the, the the services or the effect they used to uh, able to achieve. And uh, online learning uh, programs, they are some of them they are already online in the past. Some of them just uh, recently convert to online, very uh, just recently. And uh, so, as I said, the Khan Academy, IXL, those uh, there's no supervision. And there's no study plans, and you just do it yourself, and, uh, and no tutoring. And many of them are not individualized, and uh, and uh, and most of them do not use technology to ensure students master all the skills and achieve excellent results. And many are not aligned with uh, the school standards. Okay, some programs are after school program we put into online, and uh, okay. And next, I'll uh, just uh, introduce Efficient Academy's uh, program. So uh, Efficient Academy was founded, as I introduced in the beginning, uh, 2014. So the, the courses, the content are developed by a team of education experts and computer scientists. And the, the courses are aligned with US Common Core Standards. So the purpose is to help students to do well in school. So the contents align with what are required in the school. So each grade and uh, the content and scope align with the school. So purpose is to uh, make sure the students do well in the school. So it's not the extra curriculum, okay? It's the school curriculum. And currently we have uh, available uh, efficient maths from grade two to grade 12, uh, pre-calculus. The grade 12 may not be taught in grade 12, it could be earlier, okay? And English is uh, uh, grade two to grade six, and current uh, grade seven is currently under development. Uh, it is web-based, uh, servers installed in uh, AWS, okay? And uh, the flow of uh, Fishing County online program is for a new student, a diagnostic test determines the initial study plan, which consists of the starting grade and the level for review. And we can do this uh, the test online. No? And the initial stage is to fill in gaps of previous years so that a solid foundation is built. So the diagnostic test is to determine where do you start. Okay, If you're a first grade student, you do not come just uh, to first grade. We want to fill in the gap first. Okay, And uh, so as a, as a student complete the review, the system proceeds to higher grades. It does, does not stop at just review. And the system guides students to learn and practice 
until all the skills are mastered and an A or A plus to complete each grade. Okay, so a system and uh, so all the records are in the system and which skill you have learned, which skill you have done, and it's done correctly or incorrectly. And uh, have you mastered that skills uh, for each grade? And we have a proprietary way to calculate the score of the grade to make sure and the, the, the system finds the relative or weak areas of each grade and until you achieve the excellent result. And the weekly assignments are made based on the student's uh, progress. And uh, so parents are also able to know whether they, how much they complete the weekly assignments. And the students also know. And, uh, um, and if you finish that, an extra assignment can be made if requested by the student. So if somebody wants to move faster, and uh, that's fine. You can just request more assignments. So our methodology is, uh, let me summarize it here. Uh, first, enable individualized self-learning. And each grade is divided into incremental skills. Okay. And online demos and practices provided for each skill. And solutions are provided for each problem. So they can uh, self-learn. They can self-learn the new concept and do the practice. And if they do, do it wrong, and they can find out themselves or they can find out the, from the, the solutions from, for each problem. And also, it's teacher monitored. It's not like, um, like the, uh, Khan Academy or other programs. It's just uh, yourself. So by design, it is teacher, monit uh, teacher monitored and supervised. So a designated teacher is assigned to each student. And if you sign up for, for online, uh, the teacher monitors student progress and communicates with student and parent, encourages and supervises the student, and provide advice and answer questions. Okay. And the system ensures that the student learns and master all the skills. Actually, uh, the, the second one is uh, pretty close to the John Hopkins CTY. As my student uh, signed the uh, CTY course, the, the teacher, then the teacher assigned. So if he has a problem, he questions, he asks the, he asks the teachers. And uh, uh, different from CTY, so our system ensures that the system learns and masters all skills. And the learn skills are retained over time. So you learn a skill and uh, today, it doesn't mean you still retain the knowledge two weeks from now or two months from now, okay? So our system has a scheme and to, to, to check that and review that. And the weak skills are strengthened and you finish the assignment, you make the correction, like a Kumas worksheet, you make the correction and make it correct. And does not mean uh, that uh, the skills, uh, some skills are still be, can, can still be weak, okay? And the computer knows that because the computer has all your history of uh, the skills and also the students achieve A or A plus for each grade because we have all the history, the records and the system knows what's your score for each grade and they will do it can, until you achieve A or A plus for each grade. And the parents receive student weekly progress reports and can check on students progress through a phone uh, app. And, uh, and also our AI-based methodology has been granted a U.S. patent. Okay. So here's uh, some sample uh, progress uh, examples. Here is a fourth, a fourth grade student, uh, one of the students. And uh, the horizontal is the time and the vertical is the score of, uh, uh, of each grade. A uh, fourth grade student, when he entered, it led him to start with a second grade review and do the fourth grade review. And then he entered the fourth grade. Uh, take him about uh, one to two months to finish the fourth grade, and a couple of months to finish the fifth grade. So during the about one year uh, period, actually the person finished three to four grades. And here is a sixth grade uh, student, and uh, <coughs> start with the review of fifth and fourth and fifth grade. And again, this about uh, in about one year. And he finished, uh, I think, more than four grades, or at least three new grades. And here is our student uh, progress chart. Actually, uh, um, we we generate every every week, 
And uh, this uh, shows at which here the, the chart is for second graders. So they are all second grade students. And our uh, our material, the, the lowest grade is uh, second grade and up. So it shows uh, which date they complete which grade. Which means that two students already reached seventh grade and uh, some reached the fourth grade, uh, sixth grade and fifth grade and uh, which date and they finished the uh, one. And some of, yeah. So, and here is again, as uh, in the US, our older fourth graders, and uh, and some have reached eligible one, the most advanced. So you can see the fourth grade, some people they start with second grade, and some after test they start with third grade, and uh, there are a number of them start with fourth grade. And uh, they proceed with their own pace, and uh, uh, and some faster than the others. And uh, yeah, and why need to go uh, go ahead of the school? Okay, so some people say, well, you your fourth grade just to fourth grade, fifth grade to fifth grade, and fifth grade just stick with the sixth grade. Okay, and uh, uh, well, why do you do it? Uh, we want to let's say the the, the student first build a solid foundation. And if they can move ahead, they just move ahead. And uh, so one is uh, some people they, they just like to learn, right? They they go pretty pretty ahead. But also in the in the school system in the U.S., uh, also you need to be uh, ahead. <laughs> okay. So here is uh, the middle and high school math uh, pathways. And uh, so the, the the top one, the uh, the green one. And that's for the regular pass, or we call sometimes called slow pass. So the eighth grade uh, to the core eight, the common core eight, and ninth grade to algebra one, and uh, and the twelfth grade to uh, pre calculus, right? And in the middle, the orange one, uh, it's one year ahead. So eighth grade to finish uh, algebra one, and uh, the blue one at the bottom, that's two uh, two grade ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, two two years ahead. So you finish the eighth grade, you finish geometry on, at eighth grade, then you finish pre-calculus on tenth grade, and uh, then in the eleventh grade you can take the uh, AP again, and twelfth uh, grade, and at the beginning of twelfth grade you start to apply colleges, right? So it's kind of important if you go to want to go to a, a good school, you have your AP result, right? So if you do not go ahead, if you move ahead, you just uh, uh, 12th grade to the pre-calculus, then you have no AP at, at all, right? If you one year ahead, you will get, uh, take AP in the 12th grade, and when you apply for college, you still don't have AP, right? So in, in the bottom, in, in the blue track, and the, you you have that. And the, the, the many schools, they typically have this kind of three tracks. And uh, so, if you want to go to good schools, and uh, better you are able to show your AP results and uh, the 11th grade, which means you have to be uh, at least two two years ahead, right? The schools. So how to be two years ahead? So here I give you some examples. And uh, this is my uh, city, the Saratoga Union School District, the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So in the top, that's the regular track. The middle is one year ahead, and the and the, the bottom is uh, two years ahead, right? So the test we call the uh, placement test happened in the fifth grade, okay? Uh, second semester of fifth grade, okay? So how do you get to the geometry track, right? You do the geometry track. You have to in the fifth grade, and actually before you finish fifth grade, you need to take the and pass the end of year test of the grade six and grade seven eight. You get to the go to the the fast track. It's now is seven B and eight, right? So if you're looking at the eleventh uh, grade to do AP, you're looking at uh, then you it's uh, you need to look at the to complete geometry on um, the eighth grade, which means you need to go to the fast track, right? If you go to the fast track and uh, before the school finish teaching the fifth grade, in the second semester of fifth grade, they will teach you and you need to pass. The sixth and seventh grade, you were able to get it, get in. Okay. So here is another example. It's in the East Bay, the San Ramon Valley School District. 
So in the middle school, there's a, we call course one, two, three. It's for the middle school, uh, grade six, seven, and eight. Uh, there's a placement test in the fifth grade. So how do you go to the, so the middle is the eligible one on the eighth grade. And geometry, the geometry is the eighth grade in, in the bottom, right? So how to go to the geometry track? Again, geometry track means 11th grade AP, right? So otherwise, you just uh, cannot make it. So how to start with the grade uh, course three? Let, let's look at the bottom, right? The course three, you have the proficiency assessment on seventh grade standards, which means again, on the fifth grade, before you finish the fifth grade, before the final exam of the fifth grade, or before the final assessment of fifth grade, and if you go to want to go to the fast track, and you need to pass the assessment on your seventh grade standards. So you need to be at least two years ahead and to get into the fast track and go to the, then you have a, you can take a course three and algebra one and geometry. Okay. So there's a, in many schools, you have a practical, practical needs to be, get, get a, get a ahead. Of course, you can stay the same as the, as the school uh, schedule, but uh, there's definitely, there's a, there's a track for you to, to, to take. You can just take the, the, the top track, right? Uh, everybody has a, a one to take. However, the consequences, uh, you are not in this far track. And, uh, so the far track students have AP scores available when they apply for college in 12th grade. And they demonstrate that, uh, uh those AP scores, um, you can take a rigorous curriculum and have a high chance of success in colleges. And also, right now, uh, all, all the people in the fifth and sixth grade, and uh, the many school, the placement test is uh, delayed. Uh, it doesn't mean in the middle school there's no math track anymore. So, so if you waste the time and for this a few months, and uh, so what is the chance of getting to the fast track, right? So here uh, I give you a very brief introduction of our uh, program structure. So, we do, as I said, each grade we divide into a number of uh, incremental skills. For example, this uh, second grade, uh, there's uh, 113 skills. And each skill, there's five levels. The lowest is to be learned level, and then level one, two, three, and proficient. Okay. And as you uh, uh, proceed, the, the system calculates the score. So, for example, and this one has 93.31, and the goal is 98. Okay. We have three modules uh, shown on the right, uh, learning, proficiency, and efficiency. A uh, learning session is to learn each particular skill, okay, and to understand and be able to do the problem of new skills. And uh, proficiency is for the skill learned and to become further uh, proficient and to on these skills and uh, when different skills appear in a group and to review it and also become more proficient. So when in the, in the grade, every skills are learned and reach the proficiency level, there's a last session is called uh, efficiency session. Is the end of the grade, intelligent test and practice process, uh, leading students to, to achieve A for A plus. Okay. So here it shows the, the learning session. We have uh, one or two or three demos. It's a step by step demo with text images and each skill is a small step up and then uh, after the demos the student can start the exercises uh, if an error is made the student need to correct it right away so don't need to be wait on somebody to grade your worksheet and uh, it's graded right away and you need to correct them okay and uh, if you do not know how to correct them there's the demos and also there's the help the help is for this particular problem you can see uh, step by step the solutions so for this particular skill after getting five correct in a row the learning session is completed. And then the proficiency section is uh, for practicing the learned skills, okay, and also review the previous uh, learned already proficient skill and even review the, the lower grade skills. Right? You see the, the grade three up here. Okay. And finally, in the efficiency session, is the end of the grade session, and the problem is based on the uh, preparatory the quickest grow pass. So if you are 93.31, how to go from there to 98? What problem to give it to you? Okay. It is intelligent test and practice process 
leading students to uh, to master all the skills and uh, achieve A or A plus. Right? So again, this is uh, one of the major dis uh, difference between our program and other online program. Let's say for CTY, CTY just give you a test and based on test it give you a score. And here is you know your score before you finish and you work until you reach the really master all the all the skills. And here is a weekly assignment, and uh, we estimate the three hours of a week per week. And some people don't need uh, three hours to complete. Some people need uh, more than three hours. So after you done that, uh, you can request for more. And here's English. Uh, English very similarly. Uh, here English has uh, two modules. One is vocabulary, and help you to master the uh, the vocabulary for each grade and through different exercises. And also language arts. Language arts also different skills and the same structure, the learning proficiency and efficiency you have a goal. Okay. And uh, <coughs> language arts consists of the skills uh, we call reading comprehension, uh, language skills, um, basically a grammar skills, and the writing skills. Okay. You have a learning session to illustrate and uh, to demo and uh, to exercise. And then you have proficiency to uh, to strengthen the the proficient levels. So uh, with this AI-based uh, uh, methodology, and uh, students get the results better and faster. And first of all, uh, is the the build the foundation. Typically, it takes about the one to three months uh, to learn or to build uh, to learn uh, to fill the gaps of uh, previous years uh, materials. And then move forward for the current school grade or higher, and typically one to four months to uh, reach A or A plus. Okay, the benefit to students, the beautiful a solid foundation, uh, help to get into advanced math track in schools. Again, as I said, it's not just single track. It's uh, could be start from uh, uh, most of the middle schools, some in, even in elementary schools, and multiple tracks. Okay, you just not uh, just go yeah. Uh, with uh, uh, sixth grade is sixth grade, uh, yeah, and I succeed in the school classes and learn efficiently. And because uh, you use a computer and uh, schemes, so you, you it's, learning is more efficient. So you're leaving more time for other activities, and also through this you build uh, many good uh, personalities. Uh, for example, focused, right? uh, self discipline and self motivation and self confidence. And uh, the diagnostic test will determine whether you don't, for the, each grade, whether you have no review needed, or you need to have a quick review, or deep review, or to be learned. So if you are sixth grade and uh, ask you to start with the uh, third grade, does not mean your kid's uh, level is third grade. Uh, it means starting from the third grade to fulfill, you to fill the gaps, and uh, and uh, and move forward. Okay. Some people get very frustrated and uh, so, oh, my kid's a uh, fifth grade, why you ask me to start with a third grade or start with a second grade? It's to have a, a review of those things. It doesn't mean your kid uh, is uh, the third grade level. It means you need to fill the gaps starting from third grade. Okay, the advantage of our program, uh, to complete one grade level, the conventional schools probably get 20% uh, of the student who are A in nine months. Okay, and efficient gets over 90% of students to an A plus under four months. Okay, so uh, what your child can do achieve during this uh, uh, school closure? Actually, this school closure has uh, uh, at least several months. Actually, this is a uh, uh, opportunity. Actually, you can you can view and uh, to. Uh, to build a solid foundation by filling the gaps from previous years. Okay, and many students uh, in the past have been uh, so uh, heavily involved in so many programs and uh, need to go to schools and pick up school from the schools and so busy and uh, 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 no time. Uh, there's, uh, there's so many extra curriculum. And right now, uh, I think generally students have more time. Okay, it's a uh, Excellent opportunity to build a solid foundation, filling the gaps, and also uh, can get ahead of the school curriculum. And uh, if you are talking about the go to school next uh, four, 
in another five months. So uh, you have enough time to become an ex uh, academically excellent student when school returns in, in the fall. So uh, instead of uh, playing games all the time and uh, waste the time, so it's a uh, it's a valuable time actually, and you can really fundamentally change uh, the status, change the yeah. So you can build a solid foundation and go ahead with the, get ahead of the school curriculum, okay, and. Uh, so, uh, let me see. So, if you want to contact contact us, you can reach our uh, contact person and uh, listed here, or go to our website. Okay, and uh, okay, okay. That's all my presentation.